Hello and welcome to this math training video. In this video we're going to continue looking at fractions. In the previous video in this series we looked at an introduction to fractions and we started to see how we carry out simplification and the importance of the equivalence of fractions. However, what we're going to do in this video is just look at a whole heap of examples of how to do simplification. So if this is something you're really confident with and you're happy that you understand fully then please move on to the next video but each example in this video has been designed to kind of help you understand the process of simplification in a little bit more depth and to highlight some key points. So please feel free to move on if you're confident in this subject. If you haven't already watched the previous video then please go back and watch that and the following video in this series will be all about mixed and improper fractions. So let's make a start and have a look at doing some simplifying. So we've got first of all as our initial fraction here that we're going to try and simplify a nice simple one 12 over 24. Now I'm sure that many of you viewers will look at that and instantly be able to tell me exactly what the simplified fraction of this is. Uh, if you're not sure what it is uh, then please have a go at actually working your way through this question. So pause the video and uh, go through the simplification process that we looked at in the previous video uh, and that will help you to kind of see if you're on the right path and please feel free to do that for all the examples in here. But we're going to start off with this one 12 divided by 24 or 12 24ths and we're going to start simplifying it. Now if you remember from the previous video I said the best thing that you can do when you're simplifying is rather than worrying about the greatest common factor or anything like that just keep it nice and simple and start small. So think of the smallest number that both of these will divide by without leaving any remainder. So in this case we're going to ask the question will both of these numbers divide by 2? they're both even so they must do. So let's do that first of all 12 divided by 2 and 24 divided by 2 and this is how we do simplification. So 12 divided by 2 is going to give us 6, 24 divided by 2 will give us 12 so that looks like that and then we can say well can we repeat this process now again rather than jump into the next number up or trying to find the higher number ask yourself if that same number will divide into it again. And that's really a key point is that we kind of keep resetting the process here. So will 6 divide by 2? Well yes it will. And will 12 divide by 2? Yes it will. So let's do that. 6 divided by 2 and 12 divided by 2 and let's see what we're going to end up with. So we've got 6 divided by 2 is 3 and then 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now to finish this one off we're going to ask ourselves what will both of these divide by? Start again at the bottom, will they both divide by 2? Well 6 will, but 3 won't divide by 2 because that's going to leave us with 1.5 so we have a remainder or a decimal and we want to keep these as whole numbers. So we go to the next number up, will that uh, divide into this number? So the next number up from 2 is 3, will 3 divide by 3? Well yes it will and 6 will divide by 3 as well. So 3 divided by 3 and 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you can see there we've been through the simplification process and you can see that we've looked at uh, moving from stage to stage here. Now again a lot of you would have thought well why don't we just divide by 12 which we absolutely could have done but as these examples get more and more complicated it may not always be that obvious so this process will help you to simplify even if it takes a little while longer than perhaps we'd like. Just to re-emphasize a couple of really important points from the previous video this number 12 24 this number 6 12 this number 3 6 and this number 1 half are all exactly the same amount of value so they all represent the exact same quantity we've just expressed it in different ways. So there we go that's our first simplification done and kind of buried in here is a, a deeper message about prime factorization which is something that we might cover in a video way down the line because it's not really something that's taught as part of the electrical syllabus uh, however perhaps we'll just explore it because it's just deeply interesting anyway. So there we go so that's our first example done. So let's move on to our next example and our next example is going to be 18 over 24, 18 24ths. Now again I've chosen this as an example because it's going to illustrate a key point for us. So let's have a little bit of a think about how we're going to 
uh, work our way through this one. So we'll just start applying exactly the same process as we've already done. What will both of these numbers divide by? Well, let's start with two. Will 18 and 24 both divide by two without leaving a remainder? Yes, they will. So let's do the maths. 18 divided by two divided by 24 divided by two. So 18 divided by two is nine. 24 divided by two is 12. So there we go, we've got 9 twelfths. Now remember, this number here, 9 twelfths, is exactly the same as this number here, 18 twenty-fourths, just expressed in a slightly different way. And if you don't believe me, please go back and watch the previous video uh, where I actually illustrate that with visual examples. So that's quite helpful. Okay, so let's go through our process again. Start again at two. Will nine divide by two? No, it won't. Will 12 divide by two? Yes, it will, but because 9 won't divide by 2 without leaving uh, a remainder, then it's completely useless to us. So, uh, we go to the next number up. So, will 9 divide by 3? Well, yes, of course it will. 9 will divide by 3, and 12 will also divide by 3. So, there we go. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So, there we go. We've got our... Uh, next stage of the simplification. Now, looking at this again, in all the previous examples we've done, we always ended up with a 1 at the top. Are we going to end up in that situation in this case? Well, let's think. We don't need to worry about 2s anymore because we've already established if, if this number wouldn't divide by 2, then none of its uh, further kind of divisions will do so. So let's move up to 3. 3 will divide by 3, but 4 won't. Now, because the next number, 4, is bigger than 3, there's no point in asking that question because we're going to end up with a silly answer. So we've actually come as far as we can here. Okay, so we cannot simplify this any further. So we've got, and, and the real reason behind that is that there's no common factors between these numbers. In other words, there's no number that both of these will divide by. And again, there's some deeper truths buried in here, but I don't want to get too kind of uh, bogged down with those at this point. We're just trying to figure out the basics at this stage. So the key point to take away from this example is that the top number won't always be 1. Sometimes you will get so far and not be able to simplify it any further. So 18 24ths is exactly the same as 9 twelfths, is exactly the same as 3 quarters. Just a little bonus point here really, um, and again this isn't something critical that you need to know for the electrical side of things, but if you're here studying this for other uh, courses it might be quite helpful. Uh, you can see here that we've got the two numbers that we divided by, so we divided by 2 and we divided by 3. If you grab both of those numbers uh, and multiply them together, so let's bring those down here, so 2 times 3, we end up with 6. So by multiplying those two numbers together, we find that elusive, what we referred to previously as the greatest common factor. In other words, this is the biggest number that both of these numbers will divide by and leave whole numbers. So again, we can kind of do a little bit of a shortcut here. 18 divided by 24, uh, and then if we divide both of those by 6, so 18 divided by 6 and 24 divided by 6, we end up with 18 divided by 6 is 3, 24 divided by 6 is 4. So can you see that we've kind of jumped right to the straight answer, uh, uh, straight to the right answer, I should say, by kind of cheating a little bit. So uh, that's how we find the greatest common factor. We just multiply all of these division numbers together and that gives us the greatest common factor. But that's again a little bit beyond what we need to know, which is why it's just here as a bonus point at this stage. Okay, let's move on to our next example. And our next example is 15 35ths, which is a weird sounding fraction, but that's what we've got, 15 35ths. Now, there's a kind of a, a slightly deeper point in here that I want to address, so we'll, we'll have a look at this. But first of all, of course, have a go at calculating this yourself, see if you can figure out what the uh, simplified version of this would be, what the most simple version of it would be. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, I'm going to assume that you didn't do that, okay, because you're just here for the answers. So we'll move on and have a look at uh, answering this one. So 15 35ths uh, again. So let's start off with the process now. Again, you may well immediately be looking at this and going, well, I know what they'll both divide by straight away. Okay, that's great. But let's just go through the process because it helps us to understand this on a deeper level. So let's say uh, we're going to start off with seeing if both of these will divide by 2. Well, they're both odd, so no, they won't. Uh, will they both divide by the next number up, which is 3? So we've got 15 divided by 3, that will. 35 divided by 3 won't. That will leave us with a bit of a remainder, so that's no good to us. 
Now, the next logical step is to go, well, let's divide both of those by four. But actually, there is a deeper truth buried here because four is a multiple of two. And we've already proved that these numbers won't divide by two. So therefore, we don't need to actually divide by any multiples of two. So that means that we don't, uh, if we know that two won't divide into those numbers, we also know that four won't. We also know that six won't. We also know that eight won't. We also know that uh, 10 won't and so on and so forth. Because uh, if it uh, doesn't divide by two, then it won't divide by any of these multiples of two either, which is super helpful. So we, we don't need to worry about any of those now. In effect, all we actually need to use are the prime numbers. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on and so forth. So let's uh, start that process then. So uh, we know it won't divide by 3. We don't need to worry about 4 because it's a multiple of 2. So let's ask, will it divide by 5? Uh, 15 divided by 5, that certainly will. 35 divided by 5 is also going to give us a whole number answer. So 15 divided by 5 will give us 3 and 35 divided by 5 will give us 7. Now again, we could start again. Will either of these divide by 2? That won't, because that won't, they're both odd. Will it uh, divide by 3? That will, but that won't. And then as soon as we go past this number, we know that there's no point in going on any further. So it won't divide by 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, blah, 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 whatever, uh, because we've already got as far as we can go with this. So uh, that's as far as we can go with that one. That's as simple as it gets. So 15 divided by 35 is the same as 3 divided by 7. So 15 35ths is the same as 3 sevenths. Okay, buckle yourselves in because we're now going to look at an absolutely bonkers example. Just because it's all been nice and simple, this is our final example here. So let's have a look at what both of these will divide by. So we can actually just we could kind of just keep going doing what we've already been doing. I'm going to probably write this a little bit smaller so we can get it all in. So will both of these divide by two? Well, yes, they will. But shall we be perhaps a little bit more adventurous with our numbers? Both of these end with zero. So that tells you that both of these will divide by 10. So let's do that to start with because it's going to save us dividing by two uh, a few times. So uh, 2520 divided by 10 divided by 6720 divided by 10 and that's going to give us uh, 252 divided by 672 and now let's do the next stage so obviously again at this point we might be th thinking well let's keep dividing by 2 now this is this is going to be fairly easy so 252 divided by 2 and 672 divided by 2 this example is just to show that it doesn't really matter what the numbers are. Uh, you don't need to be afraid of them. You know, you just got to look at it and think, right, what will it divide by? And just kind of crunch through the process. And you'll find that that will, uh, you'll get to the right answer eventually, even if it takes a little bit longer than you might like. Okay, so 252 divided by 2 is 126. 672 divided by 2 is 336. And we can just continue down this road. So if you're comfortable, you've already got the idea behind this uh, and you can't stand to watch me going through the rest of this, then please feel free uh, not to continue with this point. Uh, again, the idea is that you get the basic principle and you're able to apply it. And hopefully that helps you with your studies. So let's keep going. Both of these will divide by two. So that gives us 63. 336 divided by two is going to give us uh, 160. Uh, eight. Okay, so these will now no longer divide by uh, th by two. So will they both divide by three? Uh, One hundred and sixty-three. Uh, sorry, sixty-three will divide by three. One hundred and sixty-eight will as well. Now the reason I could tell if one hundred and sixty-eight will so quickly is because I've broken it down mentally. So I've gone. 168 is made up of 99 plus 69 and I know that both of those numbers will divide by 3 uh, just from experience really. So 168 will divide by 3, so we can use that one. Uh, so we've got 63 divided by 3 will give us uh, 21 and then 168 divided by 3 
Uh, what's that going to give us? That's going to give us 56. Okay, so both of those uh, are there. And then will both of these divide any further? So 21 uh, divided by 56. So will they both divide by uh, 2? Well, no, they won't. Uh, will they both divide by 3? 21 will, 56 won't. So that's that. So we don't need to worry about um, uh, 4. So we don't need to worry about the multiples of the numbers that we've already done. So this won't divide by uh, 2. It won't divide by 3. It won't divide by 4. We know that from it being a multiple of 2. Uh, 21 and 56 won't divide by 5. So again, we just work our way through the prime numbers now. So will 21 divide by 7? Uh, yes, it will. Will 56 divide by uh, 7? Yes, it will. So 21 divided by 7 and 56 divided by 7. I knew there was another one in there somewhere. Uh, 21 divided by 7 will give us 3 and 56 divided by 7 will give us 8. So will uh, 3 divide by 2? Uh, no, it won't. Will 3 divide by 3? Yes, it will, but 8 won't. Therefore, we have reached the end of the road. No point using numbers any bigger than this. So what we've effectively established there, through rather a long-winded process, we cheated a little bit at the start here. That was a bit naughty. I should have, there should have been another divide by 2 and a divide by 5 in there, but we're not going to worry about that. You can see here we've gone 2,520 divided by 6,720, which is a mad fraction. Cancels down and cancels down and cancels down until it very simply becomes three eighths And I'm sure you'll agree that this is a much nicer fraction to be working with than this absolute monster over here So that is the value of Simplification and equivalence very very complicated big scary looking fractions can very often be made into much smaller nicer fractions to work with so uh, we've had a couple of videos in this series now. Uh, we've looked at how to, uh, what a fraction is and we've looked at how to perform simplification and done a bunch of examples on that. So what we're going to do in our next video is move on and look at mixed and improper fractions and how to convert between them and where we may come across them. And really, if you've watched to the end of this video and been through this big, massive, long calculation with me, then seriously well done. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching.